Good morning. I'm Scott Davis from TechWise Group, and this is The Morning Breach. Today's top story is more than 500 people in the Pittsburgh area may have been affected by a data breach at East Suburban Sports Medicine Center, uh, a physical therapy and athletic training center. Last spring, two patients told center officials that when they ran a Google search for their own names, the results included their names and email addresses. When the users clicked the link going back to the East Suburban Sports Medicine Center's website, the link was broken and came up, page not found. Once notified, East Suburban disabled the section of the website and ran audits. Uh, through those audits, they discovered that the data came from a spreadsheet that was shared out via their website. The fact that this breach happened last spring and patients were just notified April 1st of this year really highlights the need for Pennsylvania legislators to update the breach notification laws in Pennsylvania. Ransomware gangs that don't threaten to leak your data are likely stealing it anyways. A review of the majority of ransomware variants that are known to be publicly you know, being dispersed today uh, show that the majority of variants that are out there actually include the code to steal data from your network. Uh, many gangs have stepped up their attacks during the coronavirus pandemic to maximize their profit. And a lot of those gangs that we talked about earlier uh, in other episodes indicate that if you don't pay the ransom, they're going to release your data publicly. Well, there's gangs out there, groups out there that are collecting your data that are not threatening to release your data. So the question is, is what are they doing with that data and when will they do it? The rise of remote desktop protocol brute force attacks have skyrocketed since March with over 1.2 million detected attacks in the United States a week by Kapersky. Attacks on remote access infra infrastructure are unlikely to stop anytime soon. So a few simple measures that you should follow. You should always use strong passphrases. Make RDP available only through a VPN connection. Use network level authentication. When possible, use MFA or 2FA. If you don't use the remote desktop protocol, disable it through group policy. This is really, I think, a side effect of the rushed nature of getting work from home operational where IT professionals were kind of given the ultimatum of, we have to work from home, make it work, make it work now. And a lot of times in situations like that, security is not the top concern or not the top priority that is looked at. If you are using port 3389, which is the remote desktop protocol, it, you really need to take a minute and look at the security settings if you're just opening up Microsoft Remote Connection um, and accessing your computer, you are vulnerable to this. In other news, in England, Sheffield Council in South Yorkshire left its ANPR, the Automatic Number Plate Recognition System, um, public online. Uh, you could, if you knew the IP address, you could go to the IP address and it would immediately log you in to the ANPR. There was no password needed. So people that logged into the system were able to view and search the live production ANPR system. The ANPR system logs where and when vehicles traveled throughout Sheffield's road network. So this would be akin to being able to log into the system and being able to tell you where your car was and at what time your car was and in which direction it was going and when it hit the next point. So you could see the speed traveled, you could see locations traveled. Just the fact that this was just made public by simply entering an IP address, no passwords, it is a huge breach and really coming from a government agency really should just know better. A denial of service attack or DDoS stopped an auction in, of, worth of millions in rare whiskey. WhiskeyAuctioneer.com was gearing up for the second phase of the Perfect Collection, which included a 1926 McKellen and a 1937 Glenfiddich. But partway through the bidding window, technical issues began which took the website and bidding offline. Usenext and Usenet 
Bank.nl both reported breaches of names, uh, billing addresses, payment details, and other information users provided during account setup. Usenet uh, or Usenext are two paid services that kind of started from the initial adoption of what the internet was before really what it is today. Uh, everything was based on community groups called Usenets uh, or user networks. So, you know, there are still around. Obviously, they've evolved a lot. Here's two services that provide kind of that base functionality of what the original internet did. Uh, but the interesting thing with this isn't that they were both breached, but both companies blamed the breach on a security vulnerability at a partner company. So when you're looking at your data, when you're looking at your organization, your network, it's not just understanding what you are doing to protect your data, your information, etc. But you also have to know what your partners are doing to protect that same data. Are you sending employee information to a payroll company? What is the payroll company doing to protect that? Are you sending information to a healthcare vendor that's, you know, the middleman between you and the healthcare provider? Um, you know, you have to understand how and what data you're transmitting, who you're transmitting to, and oh, <coughs> oh, and ultimately, how are they protecting the data you're entrusting them to protect? If you're using WordPress, uh, you should be aware, a buggy plugin is allowing hackers to lace your websites with malicious code and create new administrative accounts to do even more harm. The flaw in the real-time find and replace was patched on April 22nd, after hours after the disclosure of the flaw, but roughly three quarters or approximately 81,000 websites have yet to update to the latest version that patches the flaw. So if you're using WordPress, if you're using any web-based CRM, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, etc., you do have to ensure that you're updating it on a regular basis, looking at your plugins, looking at across the board. Uh, the last thing you want is your website to get um, get hacked and be a repository for malware or a virus and then having it being delivered. Google Meet is now free. Uh, Google Meet is Google's kind of competitor to Zoom and Microsoft Teams. Um, but Google is looking to become the leader in video conferencing. Uh, Google Meet typically or has always been bundled in their paid service but Google is now making Meet completely free. Um, just to kind of give you some numbers, Zoom is averaging roughly 300 million daily users. Google Meet is averaging around that 100 million, and Microsoft Teams is reportedly right around the 44 million users a day. Uh, Facebook has also entered the space uh, with the Messenger desktop. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of competition coming in with the video conferencing. So definitely it's something to keep an eye on. It's also time to start planning the return to your office. And how does this look? Uh, you need to work with your IT team, your vendors, to ensure your office is ready for the return. And if you know the state says everyone can go back to work on May 31st, then every organization, you know, if every organization at the same time brought all their staff back, you could overwhelm your IT department or even your IT vendor. Consider phasing your staff back in, uh, A, to make sure that nothing's happened to your internet connection at the office. Um, you know, in load balancing, you know, your provider may have taken some load away from your business connection and put it more towards the residential because the business connections aren't needing the bandwidth. Um, or just any number of things on a technological standpoint uh, could have changed rapidly as your IT team moved you to this remote workforce, this modern workforce mentality. Uh, so before you just stay up and bring your teams back into the office, consult with your IT team, consult with your IT vendor, uh, and just make sure your office is ready for everyone's return and have a plan in place. Uh, it's the same thing. You know, one of the first things we should be doing when we get back at the table uh, is sitting down and writing that pandemic response plan. So if and when this happens again, that you, you know, with little notice having to shut down your office and you don't know when you're going to get back into it, you should have a plan. And the best time to write these plans is right after something like this has happened because it's fresh in your head 
and you know what you had to go through and what would you change? Um, I mean, I think those are the ultimate pieces. If you have any questions at all on what to include or how to write that pandemic response, or even is your office ready for you to come back to the office and you're not sure and your IT team vendor just isn't being, isn't able to answer that for you, reach out to me, Scott at TechWise Force at techwisegroup.com and I'd be more than happy to help you. Again, that's scott at techwisegroup.com and I'd be more than happy to help you. So that's all I have for you guys today. Have a great day. It was April 29th, um, Wednesday. I will see everybody back on Thursday. Thank you.